All righty, it is time to go forth and draft again. We've got a four on four today. We've got myself, Mac, Falconeye, and Sandy Dog battling against none other than Tom Martell, DZY. If you remember, one of the OG Magic streamers, Jan, is awesome. Uh, Xantos and Nammer Squats. And yeah, we are going to take fourth year Lingus. It is the best card here. I, you know, I know it's not like I like passing priority and I love putting priority in my deck, but. Fourth year Lingus is certainly the best. Passing to Martel, he's probably going to take Prayer in here. Would be my guess. The next best cards are like Emrakul, Glorybringer, Echo Vions, Ignoble. Probably wheel one of these red cards if I want one. We'll see. We'll see where we're at once once the wheel comes around. Okay. This pack has a bunch of mid pack cards like Fire Ice. Pentad Prism, Palantir, cards that I don't really want to take like second pick, though I am probably going to take the Palantir here. I like Snapcaster well enough, but I, I like having a little more. It's not even that great with fourth year Lingus, just costs so much mana. I like Trop, it's just not very close to fourth year Lingus. Restless Bivouac isn't bad, but I think you can do better. I think Palantir is a better card. And let's see, one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. Yeah, I might get Restless Bivouac back, but I think I'm just going to take Palantir of Orthonk and do love me a Mishra's Workshop with Palantir. Mm -hmm. There's also Season Pyro, though. Season Pyro into fourth is a pretty nice little curve, and it feels like I should probably do that and not to do something off the wall like Lion's Eye or Mishra's Workshop. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Workshop might wheel, that could be something to keep an eye on. There's a Frexian Dragon Engine there too. Oh, that's a late Archon of Cruelty. Don't like passing that, but probably so much better for me just to take Wooded Foothills. And then Tom has taken Preordain, Pentad Prism or Snapcaster, maybe Preordain Snapcaster. Yeah, Archon goes kind of nicely there too. Maybe I just take Archon, it's just such a busted card. And I have a Season Pyro to discard it. I could be Red Black Reanimator, Splash, Fourth Year Lingus. All right. It's also good with Palantir. I just think Archon's too strong to, to pass in a spot like that. And then now I'll probably just take Scrubland and uh, open the door for uh, the Palantir, or sorry, the, the Fourth Year Lingus Splash. I think Scrubland over Watery Grave in this particular case. Don't really want to catch you a Triumph either. There's also Show and Tell. I could just take Show and Tell because Show and Tell Archon is really strong. Show and tell Archon and then not worry about playing fourth year Lingus. Hmm. Or just, you know, see see how it works out. <laughs> we'll see. All right. I actually kind of like that. Let's just take the show and tell here. I just feel like show and tell this early when I already have one of the best things to show and tell with. And we're getting past Archon into show and tell. This, this could be a good place to be. We'll see. Scrubland also might just wheel, right? There's Watery Grave, Catcher Triumph, Oracle, Delighted Halfling. There's a lot of cards. Oh. This pack has Chrome Host, Seed Shark, and True Name Nemesis. It also has Snuff Out, which I like, and Bitter Reunion, which I like. Bitter Reunion more so because I have uh, Archon in my deck, but honestly, maybe I just take Snuff Out here. I do like Snuff Out a lot. I don't think we're in the Chrome Host, Seed Shark lane so much, and yeah, I think Snuff Out's pretty busted. Okay, now there's a Blood Tithe Harvester, a Blood Crypt, and a From the Catacombs, plus a bunch of blue stuff. From the Catacombs is a pretty good one. So let's take that. Plus I can mill it with Palantir sometimes. I think that's pretty solid. All right. And now there's a Chandra, a Zeotaurus Proving Ground, a Lotus Petal, and a Deadly Dispute. I could take Proving Ground. It's red-black. It would be really nice if this was like Mardu one, Savai Triome, but I take red -black. a red-black land isn't bad. Lotus Petal could also be good here. Lotus Petal... Can just cheat out some of these things. Yeah, let's just take Lotus Petal. I, I guess I'm also not confident what my colors are going to be. Like, as it turns out, taking Preordain over Fourth Year Lingus would have worked out better. But uh, maybe I end up just blue black and I don't care about Season Pyromancer or Fourth Year Lingus. We'll, we'll, we'll find out. So we've got, we just got past Archon into show and tell, into catacombs and snuff out, like those four cards in a row, which has changed the direction. That was one of the big pivot picks of this draft was taking that Archon of Cruelty. 
And I don't know. It's possible that uh, the Shallow Grave wheels out of our opening pack. Not super likely. Okay, Ignoble came back. Sort of Witherbloom Command, Inferno Titan, Chandra. The Glorybringer is gone. Um, Maybe I just take Inferno Titan. That's also a decent one to show and tell into. And, and or reanimate. I think I like that. Manamorphos, Thespian Stage, Graveyard Trespasser, Raging Ravine. Maybe Manamorphos here. I don't think I want Thrill Seeker. I don't care about Thespian Stage. Yeah. Let's do this because maybe we're Red Black Splashing Show and Tell, Splashing for Theater Lingus. We have Lotus Petal and Manamorphos. So we have two pieces of fixing that uh, are all five colors. So they're, they're one shots. So it's not, you know, not permanent fixing, but this is something. And. Oh, that's a late iteration. Mrs. Workshop didn't wheel. Yeah, maybe I'm maybe I'm just Grixis or something along those lines. I don't really care about Brazen Borrower. I find Doretti to be just a little too weak of a card. So I'm not that interested in that. And maybe this fourth year Lingus makes the cut. And maybe it does not. It's not like I have to play it. I think if I'm playing red, I'm going to be pretty tempted to want to try to splash fourth year Lingus because it's a messed up card. If I'm playing blue-black, I'm not sure if I'm going to be double splashing, but Iteration and Season Pyro are both pretty good in this deck, so I think uh, I think it's going to be pretty likely that Fourth Year Lingus makes the cut one way or another. I guess I'll just hit a Cathar Commando. I think that's the best card here. And definitely not drafting the Artifact deck this time. I, I, I do kind of wish I took Pentad Prism. Nah, Palantir is going to be pretty good here. Big things to mill. I also have an escape card to mill. And uh, I think that that adds up pretty quickly. When you play against someone and you play it in turn one and they say, yeah, you can't draw a card and you just mill Archon of Cruelty, that's just a huge swing. I've taken my more than my fair share of damage. <laughs> Questing Druid and Gaunti still here. Scrubland did not come back, but I guess there's slightly too many green cards. All right, let's just take Gaunti. Gaunti's totally fine here. I guess I take Burgi because I think Cosmic Rebirth is pretty tough to use. All right, I've got a fourth year Lingus here that I'm uh, on the fence about. Temple Garden, something to keep in mind, I guess. All right, wouldn't be a bad time for a Black Lotus. Never is. <laughs> Let's see what we got. Uh, so no Lotus, but there is Force of Will, Mystic Confluence, Tinker, Triplicate Titan, and Marsh Flats. So a lot of pretty good action. Marsh Flats, I think, would end up being a pretty good fixing card for me. There's also Toxic Deluge, but I don't think I'm going to take that. And I don't think I want to take the Tinker. I'm already trying to do enough stuff here. I might take Force of Will. I have two other blue cards already, and it's just so unbelievably good. Force of Will is such a good card. I think I am going to take Force and then just try to go into more blue. I don't know. Marsh Flats is tempting, too. But I also think even though Tom's going to cut me on blue some this pack, I can cut him on blue in pack three. Okay, here, huh, we take in Tinker, we take Portal. Mystical Tutor's kind of nice. I can get from the Catacombs or Show and Tell. Those are both pretty good. Don't think I care about Days too much. Definitely not taking Cryptic. And more blue cards is nice. So let's just take Mystical Tutor. We already passed up on Watery Grave, but Underground Sea is still in the offering or in the running. Next up, whoa, there's a Minskin Boo and a Vampiric Tutor and a Time Spiral and a Xander's Lounge. Wow, this is a powerful pack. Hmm. Minskin Boo go all five colors. I already have a red-white card I'm going to have trouble playing. I could just take Xander's Lounge. Time Spiral, it's such a good card, but it's not like at its best here. Vamp Tutor is also pretty nice. I think I just like Vamp in these decks. And... I think passing up on Xander's Lounge is a shame. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, maybe I get something back, but let's just take some tutors. And here I, I don't have a reanimate spell yet, but I think I'm gonna I'm gonna eventually get there. Maybe I just take Suspicious Stowaway here. I've got a lot of cards that work well with it. All right, I think that's gonna be my best bet. And right now, I'm actually looking at this Inferno Titan, Season Pyro, Manamorphos, and Iteration a little suspiciously. Maybe he's just switching into blue-black. It'll depend. I mean, certainly the way to play all these colors is not to pass up on Xander's Lounge, but I sure did that. Uh, I'm going to take Grief here. I think Grief is excellent. I've got a lot of black cards. 
I'm, I'm hoping to pick up some reanimate cards, and uh, I think Grief fits perfectly. Unburial Rites could wield Mana Confluence. don't think Fire Covenant is likely to. And if it works out to play the red, maybe it does, but... Blue Black with Mystical Vamp, Archon, Show and Tell from the Catacombs. That's like a pretty solid set of, of, of a great plays. I would kill for an Animate Dead or Necromancy. I guess with Mystical 2 to reanimate, still just the best one, but that's always the best one. So, yeah, I, I would like a reanimate. Can we get a six-pick reanimate? What do we think? <laughs> Probably not. If we get the fixing, maybe we'll play these red cards. Maybe play fourth year Lingus, I don't know. Without the fixing, might just not be on blue black, and it would be really good to pick up another another animate or two. I mean, we have from the catacombs, which is a five mana one, so that's not the fastest. But okay, well, I'm just just gonna take creeping tar pit. I love creeping tar pit, and a blue black land is exactly what I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and do that. I guess I actually kind of want one more row. Don't have any two drops yet. All right, Creeping Tar Pit it is. That was pick six. Two more fresh packs. Blue Black Land is good. So two ways to cheat things in, Show and Tell or From the Catacombs. But for From the Catacombs, we need a way to discard. Right now we have a Suspicious Stowaway and a Palantir. And then we also have Season Pyromancer, if I end up being able to play that, though, it's kind of feeling like I, I'm not going to be able to. Also, I, I do expect pack three to be better because I think Tom is playing a lot of these same colors. All right, so this pack has some interesting choices. There's a Plateau, a Red-White Land. I'm probably not going to do that. I don't think the fourth is even that good in this deck. I mean, it's fine, but it's like that's not what this deck needs. There's a Makeshift Mannequin, which is another Reanimate at four mana, which is pretty nice. And there's a Talisman, a red-black Talisman, which would help both accelerating me into these some of these fours and fives and potentially splash. I think the Talisman's actually looking pretty good here. Oh, now there's Corpse Dance, excellent. Corpse Dance Archon is fantastic. Corpse Dance Grief can be good too. So that's an easy win here. And now there's an Imperial Seal. Ooh, I kind of wish I hadn't taken the Vamp now. The third top deck tutor is kind of brutal, but I guess I'll take it. It's just these cards don't stack very well because they each take a turn to kind of come to fruition. So I I really wish I had just taken Xander's Lounge over Vampiric Tutor if I knew I was going to get a, such a late Imperial Seal. I guess maybe I could have countered on wheeling it. I don't know. Oh, Night Whisper. I do like that. I don't think Titan and Kaga are the best reanimate targets. Kaito is just okay. I've had decks where Kaito's been great, but I think just taking Night's Whisper I'm pretty happy with. I'd like to up our blue count count <laughs> uh, a little bit, but I think that'll have to wait for pack three. So red, black, land, and virtue of persistence, and Ophiomancer. A tap land isn't even that great, and virtue is nice with Palantir. Virtue, virtue seems pretty good. Just take that. Uh, I guess I'll just hate the white virtue, because I think that's the best card. And we're going to get just a couple more cards here. So going into pack three... Assuming I don't play any of the red cards, though I did pick up the Talisman, we'll see. Uh, I've got 18 cards plus one land. Oh, and Burial Rites isn't terrible, so that's a potential reason to splash uh, white. Though I, I did have to pass an Endurance, which I don't love because it's good against my deck. And we'll take the Dryad then. And a Vorniclox. All right. Well, let's see how pack three goes. We got some stuff. There's an Atali. So there's an Underman Adventure, a Comet Stellar Pup, a Flooded Strand, and an Atali, and an Urza, but not in a position to take that. I think I just take Atali. This is just another giant creature. I could use a second one, and it's one of the best ones. It works really well with Corpse Dance. It works well with Show and Tell. So yeah, that's that's totally fine. All right, and then I'll follow up with Thoughtseize, one of the best black cards, passing Thief of Sanity and Ravenous Chupacabra and Narset. All right, yeah, we are not playing... Uh, Fourth year Lingus, I think we can rule that one out. This red black talisman, I think, will be good even if I don't end up playing red. I just think having access to a little bit of acceleration is nice given the way this deck's turned out. Hmm. 
Bloodstained Mire versus Force of Negation. It's red black fixing. Force of Negation is pretty nice. And I want more blue cards. Let's just do that. Because right, right now, Mire isn't even blue black fixing. So. And then now there's Treachery, Venser, Vendillion, or Stern Scolding as blue cards. There's no good black cards. So. Here, I think. I'm inclined to take Vendillion Click, I guess. It's pretty good. Well, Venser and Vendillion Click are both pretty good when you're fighting over initiative, so I don't mind that. Don't think I want Stern Scolding. I've got a bunch of cheap plays. Mm, let's just take the three drop to fill out the curve a little more. Okay, so now there's Exhum and Unmarked Grave. Exhum would be great, except I don't really have enough ways to get things into the graveyard, and Unmarked Grave gets Archon in, so... I think that's the tiebreaker. There's also a subtlety there, but I can't really afford to take that. Oh, and there's a Necromancy. Perfect. Yeah, easy Necromancy over Infernal Grasp, Thirst, Vampire, Hexmage, any of those things. This actually worked out pretty nicely. I think the, the, the switch into Reanimator worked out perfectly. We even actually are a card over now, and it probably is just on Burial Rites. I, I've got a five mana Reanimate already, because now I have Corpse Dance, Necromancy from the Catacombs. So and a show and tell so all those plus uh, a bunch of tutors unmarked grave um phantasmal image I think actually works pretty well here it's good with grief archon it's actually fine with Atali I don't think I want the black cleave cliffs I think I'm just on blue black at this point I don't really see a reason to to do that and I don't really want dark confidant in my 20 mana cost deck plus another blue card for my forces is pretty good here, I'm just going to hate a Teferi because I think that's the best card. And that was pick eight. So now no, nothing new, but I actually even have to cut a card. So I'm not sure. Maybe it's Imperial Seal. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe that's crazy. I guess I do have Virtue and Snuff Out as black removal, which is pretty nice. I really don't want to cut any blue cards because right now I'm on three, four, five, six, seven blue cards for my pitch spells, which... Is borderline, but I think is okay, especially since I do have like Knight's Whisper and Palantir as ways to draw cards. I don't think we're getting another land that does anything. So the mana is not going to be ideal. I'll have a Petal, a Creeping Tar Pit, and a Black Talisman. And I have to just play like 8-8 eight, eight or something like that. And other than that, I mean, I guess I have outs to cast a Tali if I draw Talisman Lotus Petal exactly. But <laughs> I don't think that's... Uh, that's super likely. Yeah, not really looking for much else. I don't re I don't recall anything that was particularly critical to wheel. And I guess if I had to cut one card now, it probably would be the Imperial Seal. I think Palantir is excellent in the stack. I'm not cutting Knight's Whisper. I guess Virtual Persistence is a card you could argue for cutting. Um, oh, I do like Damnation well enough. Let's take that over Flame Tongue Kavu. I don't think Bayou is going to help me. Interesting. So Chupacabra Wield. Thief of Sanity did not. Is this a Chupacabra deck? Maybe I like to start Chupacabra over Damnation. Don't think I want Chromatic Star. Passing Tom kind of a late Chromatic Star. If you if he's in the like Academy deck, it can be pretty good. But I think Chupacabra in this kind of deck is good. But I still need to cut a card then. Unless I want to play 16 land plus Lotus Petal. Which wouldn't be crazy, but I have a lot of fours. Oh, I do have Talisman as well. Hmm. 16 lands plus talisman lotus petal is is decent and it's a very run-of-the-mill reanimator deck it does have some things going for it itali and archon are both very strong and i do have some ways to get them in quickly and a bunch of tutors oath of druids would actually be interesting but i don't think i want to try to splash green do i want to play beseech i need to sack an artifact enchantment or token Hmm, I feel like I don't have enough to beseech. So I think I'll just Thieving Skydiver, and maybe I'll just sideboard that in, depending on what I play against. We're gonna Just a couple more cards here. I'm just going to take Chariot, because it's the best card, and also pass two white cards, which is fine. Woe Strider, I think, should probably be shown the door. I don't think that card's good enough for cube. There are cubes where I would imagine Woe Strider's fine, but this, this cube I don't think has the kinds of cards... There's not this like small ball sack stuff that really would make Woe Strider pop. So I ended up with three, four, 
five, six, seven blue cards. I could actually get an eight then. I could get a Thieving Skydiver in over one of the four drop creatures, or maybe over Virtue. <laughs> I do like that Virtue is nine mana. Uh, I'll just hate the twin, I guess. I don't think passing Elspeth is a big deal, and I don't care about passing the Orcish Lumberjack. It's not even clear to me that that card increases your win rate when you put it in your deck. Do I want Virtue, or do I want one of these four drops? Um, what is Tom more likely to want to play? I guess things go a lot more wrong if you pass Crater Hoof than passing Recruiter of the Guard is kind of how I feel about it. Neither, like, I don't really know what either of them is good. And then, of course, the last pick, a Beanstalk. All right, let's build this. I think we actually just basically have it built. Just have to decide if we want to cut Virtue or Skydiver and get to our matches. All righty, time for round one. I'm going to... Try a new thing. Let me know in the comments if you like it or not. I'm going to show, show you my teammates' decks before we head down to the match. This, of course, is Mac's deck. Mac loves the Academy, but he does have it. He has Academy, Workshop, Urza Saga, Mana Crypt, Mishra's Bobble, Mox Opal, Retrofitter, as well as the Tinker for Portal, Triskelion, Coveted Jewel, Upheaval, Time Spiral, Mightstone, Weakstone, the perfect Mystic Forge deck, Emery, Mana Leak, uh, Excellent deck. I'm expecting big things out of Mac this draft. I think this deck is really, really good. It even has Raghavan, Prismatic Vista, and a couple other blue-red lands in the sideboard, which I don't think he needs to main deck. He just doesn't. So that's pretty sick. Falcon Eye is on um, kind of like big stuff with Emrakul, Woodfall Primus, Atroxa, Breach, Sneak, Monster Manual, Natural Order. This deck also looks really good. And one of the cool things is Sandy is on Reanimator, which he doesn't hit, he doesn't finished his deck, so I'll show that to you when I get it. But three of us have gigantic 15 drops in our deck, which means my show and tell is actually quite a bit better. And it's also why I ended up main decking Virtue of Persistence over the Talisman. All right, playing against Namor Squats here. I would, in fact, like to play first. Yeah, all right, I'll keep this hand. It's not, you know, knocking down any doors here, but just going to have Swamp. With Snuff Out up, turn two. If I draw a play, that would be nice. And eh, Tar Pit's okay. And then what I would really like to do is draw a blue card so I can have turn three Palantir. Demonic Tutor, okay. I really would like a blue card here. I'm a little worried. Hmm. If I don't draw a blue card, do I even play the Palantir? My problem is if he tutored for a good spell and I tap out here, that's not ideal. Let me see. Let's just hope to draw a blue card to make it easy. There we go. Palantir online. And let's put this on the bottom, put this on the bottom. Take a million. Hmm? No, just Milden Island. All right. Look, if he plays a, a spell, I force it. And now that you played Alelia, snuff it right out. I thought there was a chance that uh, that Lelia was going to be the play there, and uh, snuff out can be truly excellent. Um, huh. This is really interesting. Do I vamp here? If I vamp with uh, with Palantir out, is he just going to put it in my hand? I think so. I think I just wait. I still have the force up. All right, perfect. Bottom, put on top. And if if Nam does mill, yep, he takes 10 here off Archon plus Phantasmal Image. And I have Vamp Tutor for Escape the Catacombs next turn. Or Corpse Dance, actually. Corpse Dance just kills him. So I'll probably do that with Force of Negation back up. Ooh, look at that. Oh, we got a Sandy Dog deck. Let's take a look. So this is his reanimator deck. Oh, is that a Black Lotus and a Mox Emerald? Yes, it is. Alongside Entomb, Animate Dead, Exhum, Bowmasters. Sandy's deck is a lot better at reanimating, though he doesn't have the forces and his targets are a lot worse than mine. But overall, I mean, his deck has Lotus and Mox and Entomb. So I'm, I'm predicting that we do well this draft. All right. Nam is doing nothing over there. Okay. End of turn, I will vamp. Let's get Corpse Dance. Is that the play? I, I, I would have to tap out for it. Oh, Corpse Dance doesn't work because of a Phantasmal Image on top, so I guess I can't do that. <laughs> Let's get from the Catacombs. Let's see if Nam has something while I'm tapped out here. 
it would actually be kind of convenient if he did because I have the force up. All right, nothing. Land from the catacombs on Archon here. And I don't know how badly this can go. I have the necromancy, so we can't like necromancy it in response. We'll find out, I suppose. And if he just kills it, then that's fine too. All right, so let's do this. I get the initiative. I guess what I'm afraid of is if he kills it and plays a haster, but also the creeping tar pit's really good at fighting over initiative. Uh, let's get another blue, sure, why not? Nug you with the Archon. I kind of assume the Archon's gonna die here, but I have the from the catacomb, so it could just come back if I need it to. <clears throat> and I have force negation. It's not up right now because it's my turn, but it will be up soon enough here. So this looks pretty good. Yeah, like I said, this was just a really gross Palantir Warthonk deck. Like this deck gets to Palantir and then they either just let you draw extra cards, in which case the card is fantastic, or they mill, and even right away the mill's really a huge liability. So currently Archon is resolving. This ability is happening. Discarded Lotus Field. Interesting. All right, Palantir. And at this point, Nam just has to give me cards every turn. If I find Force of Will, this game is really over. Presumably, if he has a removal spell, he wants to use it now before I uh, do this. Oh, there's Force of Will. So let's put this on the bottom, put this on top. He just has to give it to me, and I have now Archon plus Force backup. <laughs> Double force backup, that is. So, yeah, good luck. Even a zealous conscripts or whatever is not, not going to do the trick. And I get to hide the force of will probably here. Yeah, I'm going to force of negation that pitching suspicious stowaway. They don't even know I've got force of will. That's a, not a known card. Okay, so that is game one here. Let's show the team how savagely we defeated Nimmer Squats up a game here. Mm. All right, playing against Rakdos, huh? Do I want Imperial Seal? Damnation, Unburial Rites. Skydiver was a blue card to pitch to forces, but I didn't see much use otherwise. I think I like the uh, pet Virtue still. I think I'll still just keep the Skydiver in, I don't know. I really do want blue cards to pitch to my forces, and it's still a, a, a certainly a playable card. <clears throat> so that was a pretty good good little round one, or game one rather. The, the Demonic Tutor for Lelia getting trounced by Snuff Out is just gross. They just, uh, Nam spent turn two and turn three, and I spent zero mana to, to counter that play. It was a one for one, because DT replaces itself, but two turns, five mana versus zero mana, like that was a huge swing even if I wasn't doing other good stuff. Let's see how game two goes. This matchup tends to look pretty good, but just red, black, mid can struggle against reanimator because a lot of what red, black, mid does is put your cards in the graveyard. Reanimator is pretty good against that. All right, I'll keep this hand. This really isn't the best hand, but I think it's keepable. And I have turn one grief. I'm going to grief discarding Chupacabra. I sadly don't have a great way to animate it, but I think just griefing them is still good. A braid, K command. A oh, bunch of burn. I guess I'm just going to take the talisman and pass the turn. It's the only black source Nam has, so it seems fine. I don't really care about all these bolts. These bolts can do whatever. Oh, snuff out's not a bad draw. I would like to draw... The, the problem here is, oh, there's a black source. And a tenacious underdog. All right, that's pretty annoying. You drew black source and black card right away. All right, well, I drew a blue, which is helpful because it's pretty bad when you have all swamps and no blue cards in hand because drawing blue cards or islands are both dead. <laughs> all right, I'll take three here. Then I'm going to play Gaunty, and it's going to kill the Gaunty, but I'm going to get to Gaunty him. Mm, Itali was not a great draw. All right. Let's go Gaunty. Show and tell would be amazing here. Archfiend of the Dross, Duress, Othari. Um, don't care about... Oh, and a Bolt. Duress seems kind of weak. Archfiend... I guess I'm worried that Archfiend would... 
take a long time. All right, I'm just gonna put Othari and maybe try to try to sneak Othari in on a turn where uh, Nam is tapped out. Okay, so K command, bolt two other cards. I go to 14, show and tell, show and tell. Force of negation is pretty bad. The problem is killing the, ta the tenacious underdog also doesn't seem super productive. Okay, gold span is okay, because now I get to cast snuff out on the gold span. Does give Nam a treasure, but he doesn't have an instant speed way to kill Othari. So now I go to 11, but then I get to go Othari. Oh, never mind. This is much better. From the Catacombs of Goldspan Dragon. Get the initiative. Get a blue. And play the blue. And then I think I attack and make a treasure. Now I have Force of Negation up. Nam's going to be able to attack me and take the initiative, but I don't think that's a big deal. And Goldspan is going to let me just cast Archon and Atali. Yeah, I'm at eight. I'm essentially at three if you look at the burn spells, but I have Force of Negation. Remember, I can cast it because the dragon lets me sack the treasure. And there's not very many ways to kill the dragon without giving me another treasure. So I think I should be pretty set on casting that. And then next turn, I just get to attack, and then I get to play Archon or Atali. Mm, it's close. Chain Lightning me down to five. Okay. I don't think I want to pay double red. Pass the turn. Oh, I drew a blue. That's actually, I think, pretty good. Let's attack. Make another treasure, and then I'm going to cast... Archon, because I think the life gain is really important. And let's go Lost Well. I don't really need anything else. Scry. Bottom on Mystical Tutor. I'll put Virtue on top. I could have tallied knowing I'd hit Virtue. How good is that? So if I do that, I can play the seven drop Virtue. No, I think I still just play Archon here. So let's go Archon. I'm just going to sack all the treasures just in case Goldspan dies somehow. If you can make me discard, I'll discard the Atali. And Archon eating the underdog is pretty nice here. And gaining me three, so it makes the burn plan harder, makes you discard a card. So this works out very nicely for me, I think. Let's see what, uh, what Nam thinks about all this. And it's kind of obvious that I'm leaving up Force of Negation, but I think that's okay too. Never squats on K Command. Yeah, this matchup is just kind of bad. Like, these bolts and stuff are terrible against me. It's not Nam's fault. Like, he drafted a good deck. All these cards are good in, in, and good in the red-black decks, but, like, the Mardu bolts and discard spells just tends to struggle against Reanimator, and especially Escape from the Catacombs, or from the Catacombs, rather. That card is really good when your opponent's making you discard a bunch of cards. Burst Lightning me down to one. All right, I am going to Force of Negation that and discard uh, land, leaving you with K command and hand and nothing else. It's going to be pretty hard to, to not die to this. And I even have an Othari ready to roll if I needed to. I guess <laughs> Gonti just did his job as a four mana 2-3. If the dragon lives, I can cast a Tali next turn, but also I can still just from the Catacombs next, next turn. Oh. Tenacious Underdog. All right, I will block. Not giving you the initiative, that's for sure. Draw a card, and then scoop them up. Scoop them up, Buttercup. Duress me, and then scoop them up. <laughs> Wait till uh, Nam takes the screenshot, and then boom. All right, that was round one cruising to a fairly easy victory, and I think this draft's going to go well. Let's see how the next round goes. All right, time for round two. Playing against Xantos, who's playing red-white aggro, or Boros aggro. I do like this opening hand. Mystical Tutor is really good because um, if I draw show and tell, then I can slam just mystical for, or sorry, if I draw a big creature, I can just slam mystical tutor for that. I'm going to play creeping tar pit here. Unfortunately, I didn't uh, 
draw a creature to discard. Though I guess with Mystical Tutor, I'd probably just keep it in hand. Uh-oh. All right, on the draw against Goblin Guide into Mox, this could be tough. From the Catacombs. Don't really like that. But Virtue of Persistence should be pretty good here. Let's go land. Lock Thwain Scorn, your Goblin Guide. And I still don't think I want to do anything else here. I don't think I want to pitch from the Catacombs to Grief. Because now what I can do, depending on how this goes, I could Mystical for like Unmarked Grave maybe. Hit Force of Negation. That's actually pretty good for me because it's not really going to help Xantos and it's certainly not something I want to draw. I just want to draw something big. All right, let's go Palantir. Stop on upkeep, pass the turn. I still have a decent amount of life total here. Bottom, bottom. Take 10. No, take 7 or 8 off of Archon getting milled. Uh, no, we milled a land. Take nothing. All right, all right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Guess next turn, Minsk and Boo. Well, next turn I'm probably dead here. Oh, this is Sandy's game. I was watching him play. So I don't want to watch that play. All right. Um, an eight. I think I just draw and concede. All right. I opened Mystical and I drew all lands. Was kind of hoping I could get something going there. I'm going to take Damnation out. I'm going to take Force of Negation out. Look, it counters Minsk and Boo, but that's about it. Seems like not where I want to be. And I don't think I want Imperial Seal either. All right. I like this well enough. I guess I could maybe put Inferno Titan in as well. Especially since I took out one of the forces. Maybe I just take out V-Click. Yeah, and put an Inferno Titan. I don't know if that got in or not. <laughs> we'll find out. All right. On the play this time. And sure. I don't think I'm supposed to mulligan... Turn two, suspicious stowaway here. Okay, land, go. I don't have black mana. Don't like that part of it, for sure. But hopefully I can find some. Mana Vault, okay. Oh, Lotus Petal, oh. So I could Thieving Skydiver the Mana Vault, but then Xantos would just tap it. So I don't think that's a good play. I am going to play the Lotus Petal in case I want to vamp here. I don't know what would cause me to do that, but it feels like it's relatively free. Mox, I would I would have sacked Petal to steal. Mana Vault, not so much. Mana Vault also, I mean, didn't look like the best in Xantos' deck. Maybe he's going to prove me wrong, but Thalia, Guardian of Thraben. Don't like that either. All right. Lands. Lands are decent. Attack with the stowaway. I'm probably going to discard this vamp here. I think. Because now I'm just going to cast Skydiver for one. Steal your mana vault, which is kind of painful because now it's going to be tapped. But. Mm, oh, he tapped in response? Okay. <laughs> I'll target my Lotus Petal then. That was an error. We take those. <laughs> you, can, you can keep the Mana Vault. It's okay. I've changed my mind. You can keep the Mana Vault. Uh, and then now I can play Palantir and I can play Damnation. I feel, I feel like with Thalia in play and with a Looter going, I don't really want Vamp. I'd rather just keep my land. And I think Damnation is going to be good at some point here. All right. I'll take my two, though. Go to 18. First Blood. And what do you got afterwards? Lion Sash. Okay, the Thieving Skydive really is good here. No, oh, V-Click instead of Inferno Titan. Actually, that worked out better. So <laughs> there we go. All right, let's hit. And go to 15. I draw. <laughs> Tolly, huh? Mm, I think I'm just going to discard V-Click and then play Palantir. And... I don't want to discard a Tali when there's a Lion Sash there, especially since Show and Tell is still one of my best outs. And then this keeps the pressure on bottom, top. All right, take nine. 
Yep. <laughs> oh, seven, I guess. It's not nine. <laughs> That's okay. That, that works for me. And Xantos is going to get that Lion Sash going, but he's actually dying to my Skydiver and Stowaway, and he's got Mana Confluence and Mana Vault in play, and now he can't, he can't deny me cards off Palantir either, so this is not working out well. Let's... Let's see, Xanthus on six, effectively on five, potentially even on four. Robber of the Rich. You might want to leave that back. It doesn't, it doesn't draw a card and you attack, and it has reach, so it can block the Thieving Skydiver. All right, Lion Sash is powered up. Oh, we're descending for seven, sure. Okay. Draw for turn, looking for show and tell. Unmarked Grave. That one I'm not super keen on. Let's just attack you down to three and see what we draw off the stowaway. Island. Uh, Island doesn't do much for me, so let's discard Unmarked Grave. You're on three. Just cast Damnation here. I was hoping to draw Swamp, but Damnation will do. And now... Xantos has to like go to two to untap Mana Vault. I, I get to draw cards off Palantir here. Corpse Dance. Oh yeah, I like Corpse Dance. I like Snuff Out. So top, top. I want to draw Snuff Out first, and then I can Corpse Dance the Stowaway, and then Corpse Dance, and discard the Atali and Corpse Dance the Atali. All right, you got to bite the bullet and untap. If you don't draw a land, you can't even play anything. Draw Corpse Dance with Buyback. It doesn't usually have Buyback. <laughs> All right. Going to game three. So on the draw, Force of Negation, huh? Still don't really like it. I actually do think Inferno Titan is probably better than Vendillion Click. That game, I guess it ended up being whatever. I just discarded it anyway. All right, let's fire it off. Lion Sash is uh, pretty annoying, I will say that. All right. Oh, Force of Will, Unmarked Grave, Show and Tell. Okay, I'm gonna keep this hand. I, I think it'd be crazy to mulligan it. I've got and Xantos is mulling. I've got Force Pitching Stowaway for Xantos' first play. I've got Unmarked Grave to put Archon in the graveyard with, from the Catacombs in hand, and I have Show and Tell if I draw a big creature. Uh, and an Island at some point. I don't think I'm going to Force of Will a Goblin Guide. Xantos mulled to five. Mother of Runes. No, I'm definitely not forcing that. That, that one's fine. Oh, there is Necromancy. So now I just need to draw a land. Any land. Hopefully not Creeping Tar Pit, I suppose. Because I get to go turn two, unmarked grave, put Archon in the graveyard, and then turn three, necromancy it. And that's probably good enough. Let's see what Xantos has on turn two here. Robber of the Rich. Would I force of will that? Thalia, I'm a lot more scared of. I would definitely force of will a Thalia. Abbot, I don't think I'm going to. Because it's not going to hit anything. Sword of God, if you hit Mox Pearl. Okay. You have planes. Should probably attack with the Mother of Runes, to be honest. Yeah, this is the kind of matchup where I'm not. I don't have a bunch of removal in my hand deck. <laughs> oh, creeping tar pit. All right. Well, I'm still going to do this because this keeps the door open for me to draw any third land. Now any land because the tar pit's gone. And if I miss, I know I can play tar pit, and I still have force, which I think I will pitch the suspicious stowaway. I don't think I need it. I already have a creature in the graveyard, and show and tell gives me a good out. Oh, no plays. And I drew a land? Okay, I didn't draw the land, but no plays. Uh, Mystical Tutor is also something I could consider pitching, but I don't love that. So Xantos had no three mana play, which kind of leads me to believe if he draws a land, he goes land Minsk and Boo. But we'll see. Yeah, I'll take two again. Oh, three this time. All right. Good Mother of Runes attack. It does mean whatever he's playing this turn, if anything, doesn't have a ton of value. Um, yeah, I'll play the land here, and then I'll Necromancy the Archon. You have Endurance. 
That's a card he could be leaving up here. I wouldn't be surprised. Oh, no. I am pleasantly surprised. Sack one of those creatures, I don't care which. And then if you kill it again, I've got from the catacombs. Would like to draw a land, perfect. Now we're, now we're basically a lock. I, I don't really see how Xantos can realistically win this game. Like the best he can do is like swords to plowshares, the Archon, all force of will it. If this is a, a Skyclave, then that's totally fine actually, because it's gonna Skyclave the Necromancy. Archon's gonna die. And then I'm just gonna, from the catacombs it, I could also Corpse Dance. Let's see, that does 12 and kills both creatures and discards two cards. All right, yeah, that, I'm in for that. Corpse Dance, draw, cast Corpse Dance. I'm not even gonna buy it back. I don't think I want to. I think I wanna play Suspicious Stowaway. And you don't have to really decide. And that'll do it. A clean 2-0. Let's check in on the team. Alrighty, time for round three. Give you a little update. I'm 2-0, you know that, you saw the matches. Max 2-0, his deck is busted, it's awesome. Falcon Eye is 1-1, so that leaves us at 5-1, and Sandy is 0-1, so Sandy is down a match. So we're, we're in great shape, but could use another win here. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to mulligan this hand, it's just too bad. This hand, however, is not. I'm gonna keep this hand Against Thomas Martel Esquire. Um, I'm gonna draw. I think I'm gonna put Palantir back. And I'm gonna go turn one tar pit, turn two, well, land go. And if I drew an island, oh, interesting. I think I'm just gonna do this, pass. And I would like to, Mystical Tutor for show and tell, Having a grief hit first seems like a pretty good way to do that. So let's draw, let's play a land, let's pass the turn, and we're gonna set this up for next turn, I think. Because grief into show and tell is a, is a pretty good sequence. All right, let's cast Mystical Tutor and let's see if Tom lets me. I mean, Tom is gonna let me because he likes value just as much as I do. Land, and now I'm gonna cast Grief, Exile, and Corpse Dance. Leaving me with Show and Tell, and you guessed it, a creature to put into play. <laughs> Let's see if, what Tom can do about this. This could, this could get him pretty good. I have the V-Click, that's the kind of card that would get me. Subtlety, Exiling, Turnabout. All right. Well, we might have a low resource game here. Um, I'm gonna put this on top, because I'm gonna then cast Show and Tell, and if he's got Mana Leak, then so be it. He's got Remand, okay. So next turn I get to try to do that again. Unfortunately, I don't have, hmm, I don't have the ability to play Grief. Let's see what Tom does. Oh, Winter Orb, he's gonna slow me down, okay. Uh, let's untap this. Unfortunately, putting Grief on top did kind of screw me, except if I draw another black source or another black card, because I'm going to have three mana next turn, that would be really good. Okay, so black card would be ideal here. Black card, black card, black card. Oh, yeah. Cast by Exiling Knight's Whisper. And if you mana leaks it, I just let that resolve. All right, Grief you. What you got? Bribery and Brazen Bar. All right, well, I'm gonna take the Bribery. You can, uh, that was the card, I, that's the card I'm most worried about. And then I'm gonna cast Show and Tell and you can Brazen Bar all you want. Okay, let's put Atali into play. Tom's not gonna put anything into play. Atali, what do we hit? It's gonna be big. I hit Echo of Eons and Force of Will? Hmm. Really? This is what we hit? Oh, uh, milling four lands on the way. Yeah, I mean, I guess I echo of eons. I think I'm more likely to win from that position. And I'm not going to force a will. He's going to bounce the Itali. Wow, that was such a bad hit. Echo's not even great here. And hitting force of will is just a straight up blank. So ran pretty nicely drawing the Knight's Whisper for the grief and ran really poorly drawing hitting the... Uh, 
the echo here and the, the force will be even worse. All right, um, play a land, let's pass the turn. So Winter Orb is still out. So Tom may or may not be casting Brazen Borrower here. Well, that was, that was unfortunate. All right, I kind of like that he's casting this because I feel like I can uh, take advantage of the fact that he's now tapped down pretty low. Though, of course, if he, he has a bunch of ways like Ancient Tomb and stuff to, to make it less of a drawback. All right, well, it doesn't really help to vamp end of turn if I'm not going to cast a thing on my turn. Oh, Candelabra is really good here with, with uh, Winter Orb. Let's untap that. Just draw the show and tell. Oh, Mystical Tutor. Or sorry, Lotus Petal. Lotus Petal is pretty nice. Let's play the Lotus Petal. Let's pass the turn once again. End of turn, he's going to tap Ancient Tomb, take two, and Candelabra, the two lands. Possibly the Ancient Tomb, possibly just some islands, I don't know. Nice little combo, though. Draw. And he's going to untap Ancient Tomb again. So now Tom still, Winter Orb still does impact him, but much less than it would have before. Okay. And I think I just go for it again. I'm in a bad position now, but there's not much I can do about that. Let's get show and tell. And let's untap one of these lands. Let's draw. Let's cast show and tell. <laughs> and I assume I'm getting countered here in some way, but I'm kind of out of gas otherwise. The Winter Orb is constricting my plays a pretty good amount. I don't really have better options. All right. Well, Tom's thinking a while. Does that mean it could resolve? All right. Guess that's something. And you just put a land into play? Okay, okay. Don't mind this. Our kind of cruelty is pretty good, and he gets to discard. Drawing a land would be really nice for me. I think that would help quite a bit, because I'm very constrained on mana. That winner orb isn't going anywhere. V-click. No, that was not a land. Pass the turn. And he can tap Ancient Tomb to untap two lands again if he wants. All right. So, Force of Will is gone. I wonder if there was some, if Force of Will was still there. No, I didn't have a blue card. I was wondering if I could vamp for Force in response to the trigger to have Archon plus with Force up, but fortunately that is not gonna do the trick. Okay, so, oh geez, High Tide. Well, I'm probably gonna lose here. Let's see. I mean, Tom now has 14 mana plus an additional seven off Candelabra. He has 21 mana. It's a very cool deck. I think Tom's deck is awesome. I think the Atali hitting the, the worst card possible in Force of Will and the like one of the worst cards possible in Echo was not great for me, but this was a pretty close game either way. I mean, I, I did put a lot of eggs in the basket of Atali resolving and it didn't quite work. Mm -hmm. Six mana. And I can't even tutor for anything because of the Winter Orb. It's like really making it so I can't cast any spells. So I don't like that. But we'll see. Tom at the very least has Echo of Eon, so I kind of feel like I'm dead here, but I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll see what, what he does. All right, Candelabra all his all his lands. I'm gonna start with a bribery. Oh, Memory Jar, okay. Mm -hmm. And then flashback echoes. That maybe what's happening. All right. <laughs> it's also brutal that Force of Will got exiled because with all these draw sevens, hitting the Force of Will would also be good. So yes, it was <laughs> that did not work out great. On the other hand, my hand has some okay stuff, but I don't think we're going to get to that point. Like, if I untap an attack with Archon, maybe I can Phantasmal Image it afterwards. Yeah. I guess if he bounces Archon, I get to untap a land, play a land, and show and tell it back into play, hopefully. That's not not nothing. <laughs> okay. What you got? Urza? And then potentially a oh, Vencer, the Archon. No, I guess I get to... Show and tell, are you gonna like memory jar me or something? 
in response. No. Tom's down to eight mana. He spent a lot of mana so far. Talisman, sure. And where are we going from here? And four more mana. Hopefully not Urza. Urza would be pretty bad news. Don't think I would beat an Urza. Oh, bribery. Oh, Teferi. Okay. Okay. I guess I'm going to get to put an Archon into play. And Tom didn't draw bribery? Uh, that's a thing. Let's, let's untap the tar pit and draw. Also, having no like moxes or anything against this Winter Orb deck is not making things easy. All right. Show and tell. I mean, you know what I'm putting into play. It's going to be Archon of Cruelty. And then maybe, just maybe, I can Phantasmal Image it next turn. Again, I don't think that's very likely, but we're not technically dead yet. The Spirit Token with the Memory Jar is representing like at least a 10 10 next turn. 11 11 if you draw off that, so that's pretty big. All right, let's put Archon of Cruelty into play. Tom put a subtlety into play, sure. Doesn't put anything on top. Okay, draw Force of Negation. Sack your Vincer. Force of Negation would be a really nice draw here. Uh, Unmarked Grave is nothing. Pass the turn. He had Remand in hand? And he tapped out so he didn't have Remand up. I guess he had Subtlety up, huh? Okay. Uh, gets to untap only one land again. And these Archons have done a bit of damage. You can jar, you can crack LED and then jar. And that would get him a fair amount of mana. You can also, can't quite ultimate Teferi. That's 12 loyalty. You can draw seven cards, get up 10 loyalty. Maybe he cracks LED and jars and maybe, and at that point I have a, Pretty decent chance. Oh man, High Tide was a, a card? That's bad for me. That gives him a lot more mana than I was hoping he'd have. All right, all right. Well, I can hope to draw Force of Negation plus blue card when I'm drawing seven cards out of 17 here. That's not a crazy thing to ask for, I don't think. Okay. Force blue card? Oh, and Snuff Out. That was actually about as good as it gets. Okay, okay. Also, Bribery doesn't do much anymore because I don't have a Tully in my deck. So that was actually like the perfect set of cards. I'm not gonna... I'm not gonna do anything to the Spirit yet because I wanna see what Tom is, is doing here. I don't want him to know that the Spirit token is gonna die. Okay, it's a 10-10. I really hope he briberies me because I think I can let it happen. I have a Chupacabra in my in my hand. He can't, and I have Phantasmal Image, so I don't even know what he can get. And Vendillion clicks in my hand, so I think I can let Bribery resolve. Okay, Candelabra yourself. Tom's up to 18 mana. But we're going through his entire deck. Can his entire deck beat me casting Show and Tell three times? I guess we'll see. That's all I've done is I just sit here and I cast Show and Tell every turn. Narset, sure. Brazen Borrower, I would not like. Is that exiled somehow? No. Okay, he got Cryptic Command. I don't like that. Brazen Borrower, yeah, I guess I can't counter that. Uh, because of Cryptic, Talisman, sure. And, I mean, Urza's gonna gotta come down here, yeah. I can't counter Urza either. Attack with those, and let's go snuff out on the Spirit Token. I wonder if I should have snuffed the Spirit Token in response. No, he's just sitting on that Cryptic, okay. That's fine, I suppose. 
Is he really not going to use cryptic for anything? I mean, he knows about force negation, and Tom is one of the people who would play around that the most. So, certainly don't. This doesn't surprise me. Mm -hmm. And fairy mastermind. Yeah, you got it. And then on my turn, I'm going to untap a land and I guess hope to. I can't, I can't even really do anything, honestly. <laughs> I can untap a land, I can play a land, I can Phantasmal Image the Urza, I guess, but it's just not going to do much. Yeah, I will force it. It doesn't even really do much. Okay, and then Memory Jar dumps all these cards into the yard. Unfortunately, my Lotus Petal is still gone. All right, on tap, on tap one land, draw, and I think I'm dead. All right, wild game, but didn't get there. Oh, definitely don't want Imperial Seal. I like Skydiver's great, Night Whisper. Yeah, I mean, I just like all the cards I have. I just need, oh, I guess Virtual Persistence is kind of weak. It's only good for <laughs> Palantir. I might just want a Talisman, especially against Winter Orb, so I think I'm going to do that. And I don't really want Inferno Titan. All right. Game two, I would like to play first. Um, what does this hand do? It doesn't really do much. I don't have black. And I don't have a creature. But if I do draw a creature, I get show and tell, necromancy. I think I have to mulligan that hand. Okay. I'll keep this. And I guess I put Phantasmal Image on the bottom. And I think what I'm going to do here is end of turn, I'm going to Mystical. I'm going to get Unmarked Grave. And. Let's go land, unmarked grave, put Archon. And now I just need to draw a land, and I have turn three Archon with Thoughtseize backup. All right, land. Land, please. Would be really nice. If I don't draw a land, I'm probably just going to Thoughtseize here. I don't think I'm going to try to run out the Necromancy. Conti. All right, I'll play Lotus Petal. Thought sees you and see what's up. Gaunti was like the worst. <laughs> Brazen Borrower, Cryptic Command, Thirst Fencer. Jeez. Yeah, it would have worked this turn. I mean, I guess there's Brazen Borrower, which is going to bounce it back. I guess I take Cryptic Command, pass the turn. Mm hmm. He gets to Thirst, end of turn. Uh, he draws. He has drawn that Ancient Tomb a lot in the matches I've watched, and it's been really good. I mean, it's a great card. Hmm. Okay. Um, so he, just, he found an island to discard and an island to play. And he's got Lion's Eye Diamond as well. Play a land. Um, and I mean, I guess I just start by casting Necromancy and force him to do some bouncing. Don't really think it does better than that. He had a pretty good hand against that, where like he would be able to stop it or bounce the Archon a bunch of different ways. Discard a card. I draw a card. And I'm hoping to find a show and tell because this is about to get bounced back to my hand. Okay. That was the right order to do things in case I uh, drew a force and had a blue card. He doesn't know. He doesn't even know I don't have that. All right, so he discarded another island, kept turnabout Venser. Okay, if Tom doesn't draw action, this could be okay. Swamp would be nice. Yeah, because now I'm just going to play Gaunty. I think Gaunti is a better play than Palantir here. He's probably going to venture it either way, but 
if he doesn't, I'd rather do it this way. Also, he could save Venser to Venser whatever card I play off Gonti. Something to consider. Okay, so currently team scores, Sandy 1-2, Falcon 1-2. I'm 2-0, Max 2-0, so that gives us six wins. So we've locked in a tie. If I win this, we win. If I lose this, Max still has to play against Martel. Martel needs to 3-0 to tie. And uh, we need to not let him 3-0 in order to win. Oh, no, Sandy's 1-1. One, one. So Sandy has another match, too. All right, that, that's actually great. Mindstone, hit for two, and you're going to play Brazen Bar. All right, actually feels like we're doing okay here. Hmm. Okay, let's draw. Land. Um, yeah, let's Gaunty. Because I think putting something on the board is, is good here. Fairy Mastermind, Remand, Subtlety. I'm going to take Remand because it's just the cheapest card. I mean, Fairy Mastermind's also cheap, I guess. I'm not that worried about dying to uh, Brazen Borrower plus Venser. I mean,. Maybe if Tom gets rid of the Gaunty, but it's not like he's got a lot of removal. He's got Turnabout in hand as his last card. It's just not that impressive. So I wanted Remand in case he like plays Echo of Eons or Memory Jar. Actually, Echo I can't really stop because of the Lion's Eye. Though if he does the discard uh, Echo play, flash Echo back, that would be really sick. Winter Orb. Huh? I can't stop that. That is pretty annoying. Okay, Winter Orb makes Palantir a lot worse. Let's untap this land. Because I was actually kind of building up mana to cast Archon of Cruelty. Do I even want to play Palantir? I kind of don't. It doesn't really seem like it does anything. I guess it hits, it hits my land drops. Yeah, I'll play it. It's fine. He has Turnabout too, so at some point he can just turn about my lands. All right. Uh, bottom bottom. kind of feel like Tom's just going to mill one here, but we'll see. We'll see how how greedy Tom is. All right, he milled a vamp. Not too punishing. And Winter Orb is messing me up. He hits me to 13 here. Okay. Untap. All right, didn't get punished by not leaving up remand. Land is all I really want to hit here, but obviously I'm not doing that. All right, let's go Palantir. Bottom, top. I'm actually pretty happy with Force of Will either way. Okay, Tom just let me draw it, which I don't mind. Force of Will, I think, is going to be pretty important to try to win this game. Hits me to 10, and then he goes turnabout, hit me to 5. That doesn't quite kill me. Ooh, what is this? Seven mana. Well, this looks like a good a good target for remand, potentially, but we'll see what he's doing. Turnabout. Okay. Oh, if he has Echo of Eons here, it's actually going to be really sick because I'm going to force a will to Echo, and then he's going to flash it back, and I'm going to remand the, the, the second path. <laughs> I feel like that's what he drew. Oh, he just drew Echo, and he, he's just straight up doing this. Ooh. This is not going to work out great for Tom. This is because this just straight up exiles it, and I draw a card. And he discarded his hand here. Okay, from the catacombs, huh? I have now the turnabout's gone, by the way. So I have a little bit of time here. I have five turns before the brazen borrower kill me kills me. Let's draw, untap island. I just need to draw lands, 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 lands. Vitaly, come on. All right. I need to draw show and tells. Show and tells. At least I'm drawing extra cards off Palantir. The other thing that's awkward is my only blue card is Vendillion Click. All right, well, do I want to lock into drawing two lands? No, I don't think so. The reason I don't is because I'm drawing a land this turn, so I'm already one ahead. I get my draw step, and I get another Palantir, because at this point, Tom just has to give me the Palantirs. One thing that's annoying about the Force of Will, by the way, is it uh, does take a turn off my clock. All right, land. Tap this. Though I think I'm winning this game. Oh, 
Never mind, I'm definitely winning this game. Show and tell. I'm just going to put Archon in. Because that'll do it. And hit, and I have Force of Will for his top card, and I don't think I'm going to get to Remand Echo in Game 3. A lot of things have to come together for that to happen. <laughs> All right. Boom. And Palantir, sure. Bottom. Put Snuff out on top, why not? And even if you top deck this turn, it does not matter. I don't think there's any card he could draw. Like, Echo of Eons would be the card to draw normally, but nope. Force of Will that. Had you covered. Game three time, baby. Whew. Okay, okay. Can I do anything about Winter Orb? I guess Side and Talisman? That's about it. I don't think I'm putting in Cathar Commando. Let's do it. On the draw here. Let's not mulligan this game. I would like that. What do we got? Yeah, I mean, this is a great hand. Tom's mulling. This hand can set up an early Archon. We'll see. We'll see. All right, land is not actually terrible because it means I can get show and tell. I don't know that I need to get show and tell right away because if I draw for my turn and I draw show and tell, then I can vamp for a force of will instead. Draw Knight's Whisper. Uh, okay, all Knight's Whisper. Or try to, getting remanded, sure. I'm, I'm more than happy to have that happen. Using up a remand is a-okay for me. Narset. Narset's pretty good. Cryptic Command is the revealed card. All right, draw. Thought sees, huh? I can't Knight's Whisper into Narset, so I'm not going to do that. Here's where not having more black is tough. I think I'm going to Thought Seize, and that'll help me plan out my turn. I don't need to race here. Cryptic Command, Subtlety, Winter Orb, High Tide. Yeah, I'm going to take Cryptic Command, play a land, pass the turn. And I kind of just want to draw lands here. Gone, Narset. Miss on Narset? No, bribery. Okay, and he just gets to bribery me now? I guess so. All right. Well, he gets to put Atali into play, and he knows I don't have the forces. He's drawn the Ancient Tomb every game. <laughs> well done. Um,. Yeah, I couldn't do anything about that. I think I just let this trigger resolve. That's fine. What do we hit? Venser and Force of Will? Okay. He mostly missed, and I have Snuff Out to kill the, the Atali. All right. What are you going to Venser? My Swamp, I guess? Uh, okay. I don't need to kill the Atali right now, I don't think. Draw. Conti, another terrible draw. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, I'm going to exile Knight's Whisper, I think, to cast Grief. Kind of think I'm going to get subtletied. But we'll see. Unfortunately, I don't have show and tell in my hand right now, so I can't. I can't do anything too good. So basically, does Tom want to exile the high tide to stop the, the grief? He does not. So I'm going to grief him. Chromatic star, subtlety, high tide, winter orb. I actually think I take winter orb. Yeah. So his winter orb is gone. He has high tide, subtlety, chromatic star. And then I'm going to cast Thieving Skydiver. And then I'm going to snuff out the Atali. Okay, I actually think I'm in a pretty good position here. And because Subtlety no longer really does anything, 
got Archon in hand. I get to Vamp. The question is, do I block here? I don't think so. No, I guess I do, because otherwise he's going to just play Subtlety to block me. So I think I block. I'm just going to play Chromatic Star. If he didn't draw something, oh my god, what is this? Teferi? OK. That's pretty good. Um, make a 2-2. Two -two. All right, I'm going to vamp now. So now do I show and tell or do I necromancy? I think I necromancy because I don't even draw a card off of uh, off of Archon because of the Narset. He's probably not sacking the Narset. Okay, necromancy. All right, Atali, it's time to earn your stripes. Let's go. Let's go. What do we hit? Vendillion Click and Chrome Host Seed Shark. Yeah, sure. Let's go. V click and do I cast the seed shark? If I do that, he gets to pitch cast subtlety and put seed shark on top, which I don't love. I think is probably fine. Okay, not the best Itali. Really not. But I could still draw show and tell. Oh, I was hoping to Otali into show and tell. That would have been sick. I was hoping to hit. I guess Urza's not actually that good with subtlety in play. Oh, I guess for subtlety, its owner puts it on the top or bottom. Yeah, so even though I'm controlling the seed shark at the moment, it's uh, I, I can sh he gets to choose. Okay, subtlety is in, high tide is gone. We're down to Chromatic Star in hand. I do have an Atali out, which is pretty big. It's gonna it's gonna do some damage. I can't V-click uh, myself because of the Narset. And are we putting the Seed Shark on top on the bottom? Okay. I'm gonna decline to do that. Because if I do that, he he draws a card off in Teferi and the thing get bigger. He could still draw a card off the, the Chromatic Star, but I think I might as well make him pay an extra mana to do that. Okay. So he could make... He could actually make a, make a token and then star draw a card. So maybe I actually wanted to, to take the Chromatic Star. Hmm, that's actually close because now the tokens can get big enough. Oh, he's just drawing a card. Okay. So 4-4, four, four. Teferi's on 4. Hopefully it's like star, crack star, hope to draw something, miss. Okay, star at blue, Teferi goes to 5. I'm at 12 and he's at 16. Just miss, Tom, just draw two lands. I just have no plays this turn. Okay, no play. Swamp would still be pretty good. Show and tell would be amazing. Island? Come on. Ugh, all right. Um, I think I have to attack Teferi for, for it all here. I can't beat very much. <sighs> Needed to draw Swamp or a spell that did something, and Island was like the absolute worst. Okay, he gets to attack back for six, putting me to six here. Next turn it's going to be big enough to brawl with Atali. But this turn it would have been big enough if the Teferi lived. All right. Swamp, card that does something? Nope, all right. Let's attack Narset. Leave up Itali. Pass the turn. Okay, and now land go. No attacks. He's probably gonna wait on attacking until uh, Oh, can I counter this? Please not be an Urza. Please be a spell that I can counter. If not, I am completely screwed. Lion's Eye Diamond, sure. Oh, is this the Echo of Eons? Turnabout, no. All right. Otherwise, I'd be dead. He has no cards in hand. He's just going to wait on that. But if I draw 
If I draw a land, that's pretty good. Show and tell would be amazing. Oh, show and tell. I'm losing it. Oh, my God. Th that's it. I, I peeled the show and tell. Put Archon into play. <laughs> oh, what a match. Hit for 10. And now, now it's all over but the draw step. I guess he could draw Echo of Yons and then we'd have a game. But let's go. Let's go. Land. And that's it. A 3-0, and we won the, the match to clinch the game win, or the draft win. Whew, that was a match. That was a hell of a match. That was that was an awesome one. And, like, I didn't think this deck uh, was the best, but it had some good stuff going for it. And it further cements my decision to just take Archon. This card is just so busted. It's so good. It's the best reanimate target by so much. Um, we've got... Itali here as well as like one of the top ones and then it was a little light on cheap reanimates it had necromancy corpse dance and from the catacombs only but it did have show and tell and that card has gone way up in my estimation plus thought seize vamp and mystical to try to set those things up and the double force which is key as well Ooh, i'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to cool off after that one but that was a 3 out that was another victory we've been on a bit of a heater lately my, my draft records has I have no complaints. And uh, that'll do it for today. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for hanging out. And uh, I appreciate how much you love Cube, as do I. I'll be back tomorrow with another draft. And uh, it's, hard being, it's becoming hard to top the last one, but I'll always try. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. <laughs>